Alrighty, so in this next part of the series, we're going to be creating that data set by annotating our images. So opening up RoboFlow, feel free to use the link below to get here and sign up for an account all of which I've already done. So machine learning essentially is we're telling the algorithm what we think it should know in technical terms. We're assigning weights based on the data and the algorithms are going to see those weights and learn from it. Um, thinking about how a person learns is our brain are taking in experiences and we're learning from them and we're able to create and make decisions from them, whether that's pointing out something that we recognize or whether that's understanding the level of, of damage severity per se. So for our cases, we want to make sure that the machine learning algorithm that we choose is going to be able to both detect damage, um, but also determine, determine the severity. So instead of detecting a person or a piece of candy, we want this algorithm to understand a house, a building, also understand that it, it is damaged or that it's not damaged, and to what degree. So that's what damage assessment entails, and that's what we hope to do with this machine learning. There's definitely a host of, you know, different annotating platforms. We are looking right now at our basic RoboFlow platform. This is browser-based, it's free, and it's definitely extremely user-friendly and accessible. So we're gonna stick with this for our options as I've built the tutorial based on RoboFlow and its other integrations in machine learning. So in general, RoboFlow can annotate and do different types of things with different workspaces. Our workspaces essentially determine, you know, the nature of the work. For us, this is going to be disaster recovery based. So I've already labeled and created my workspace. Feel free to label and create your workspace based on, you know, the research needs or whether you're also doing damage assessment. Now, each project is where it tends to differ. So each project is going to specifically create damage data sets based on the type of machine learning. So let's take a look by creating a new project. Here we have the project name, which for our purposes can be damage detection. Feel free to keep that succinct labeling here. Um, when it gets to project type, this is where we're starting to uncover, you know, what type of machine learning are we going to be using? Now, we could be using instance segmentation or multi-classification. And while I could really get into why we are choosing different ones, for our purposes, this is going to explain how object detection is going to work for machine learning. Now, object detection basically is using the bounding box method to understand and use machine learning. So what that'll do is it'll create, which we'll do here in this tutorial, a box around the object we're interested in detecting. For us, that's architecture buildings. So we'll create a bounding box around those things as seen in an image. And what the machine learning algorithm will hopefully do is be able to detect that bounding box from any image, detect a house from any image, but also detect the level of damage. So here you can put bounding box, feel name the project, and here I just like to put damage. Go ahead and create that public project and it'll be blank. I have already created a project that is in the works. So starting at just the overview of this data set in RoboFlow, we see that there's an area to just kind of do a little descriptions. I would recommend this is, this is an area, oh, kicked us out. So I'd recommend that this is an area where you put different information about the data set, licenses, copyrights, um, but also put in uh, maybe potentially annotation protocols, how you're going to determine whether something is severe or not damaged. Um, I'll get into how we're going to do it for this tutorial, but this is a great space to kind of give and share information. Why? RoboFlow actually allows different collaborators to collaborate on one project workspace. What that means is they can upload and annotate as they please. This is a great feature because it lessens the capacity for you. So how does that work? Let's start by uploading some images. 